Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to get multiple stock correlations uh, using R, and uh, I've installed uh, Jupyter Notebook support for R. If you want to know how to do that, I have a short video that explains it uh, that you can find on my channel. And let me just say, uh, as we get going, uh, I'm going to take a very mechanical approach so you can see step by step what's going on. To do this more efficiently, you'd probably write a function or a, or a more cohesive script. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to need to do as we get going is to uh, install the QuantMod library. And uh, this is a package that allows us to, among other things, uh, download data from uh, several uh, different sources. All right, so it's already installed here. All right, but this is the, uh, this is the line of code you would need all right, uh, without, the, uh, without the pound sign here. All right, and to execute a cell in uh, Jupyter, uh, you hold the shift key and press enter all right or you can you can click the the run cell button up in the, the toolbar all right so once you get a uh, quant mod installed you're going to need to load it all right so there's the command for doing that okay and so we can see this message tells us it was loaded all right and once we've got it loaded we can go ahead and get some data i'm going to get data for uh, amazon and I'm going to use the quant mod get symbols function, which really only needs a stock symbol. All right, but the default data source is Yahoo, and they've recently changed their API, so it's not working. I'm going to get it from Google. All right, I'm also going to specify um, to only look back about a year here. All right, and I also need to set this auto assign to false. All right, yeah, the first time you run it, you're probably going to get this warning message. And uh, basically it says, well, the current default on auto assign is true, and they're going to be changing that, so you won't have to in the future uh, set it to false. All right, so even though we're only using uh, QuantMod to download data, it has lots of functionality, and it's very well documented. If you, if you visit their website, you can download the manual. Um, I'm just going to show you one function, this chart series function, to give you an idea. And uh, again, all it really needs is the, is the data you want to chart. All right, I'm also going to change the theme, which uh, by default, is black and uh, I'll change it to white. All right. It also has a pretty extensive technical analysis library, so I will just add a simple moving average 50 days here just to give you an idea of, of what that looks like. All right, so then we just execute it and yep, you quickly get a, a chart with the with the 50 day moving average. Okay. All right, so getting back to our stock correlations, I'm going to go ahead and uh, download some more data here. In the interest of time, I have pre-written the code. All right, so you can see I'm going to get data for the FANG stocks. Here we execute that. And uh, just to get a quick idea of, of what you get when you download, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at the first few rows of, of Netflix. All right, so we can see what we get here. All right, and actually all we need is the closing price. We're gonna, we're gonna be uh, comparing the change in the closing prices of each one of the stocks to get the, to get the correlations. All right, so again, I've sort of pre-written the code to do that. Set a new variable, call it stocks. I'm going to dump this into a data frame. All right, and then I'm just going to merge the closing price column uh, from each one of the uh, the extensible uh, time series that that uh, QuantMod uh, downloads data into. All right. Once again, we'll just get a quick look at what we end up with. All right. So you can see, as advertised, uh, we just got the the closing price columns for uh, each one of the stocks. All right. And to make it a little cleaner, 
uh, I'm going to change the names Okay, so uh, now our data frame has, uh, instead of this sort of weird column name, uh, it just it just has the stocks ticker. All right, all right. So to uh, to get the correlations, like I said, we're going to need to calculate the the daily price change. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, create another variable to store that in. All right, and um, what we need. Uh, is the uh, instantaneous rate of return. So to calculate that, we're going to first calculate the, uh, the difference all right uh, actually let me, let, me, let me make sure it comes out as a data frame. I'm pretty sure it will, but I just want to specify that we do get a data frame. Um, uh, but yeah so we're going to want the difference. all right so the diff function, is uh, calculates a lag difference by default. It's one day. Uh, that's what we want. All right, and uh, I want to do it on all the columns. So I'm going to call this as matrix function. All right, and then um, all I need then is the the log of the stocks. Okay. All right, and uh, one more time, we're going to just make sure we got what we expected. So that's the stocks returns. Oops, got to spell it right. All right, so there we have the instantaneous rate of return for each one of our stocks, and uh, this allows us to compare them directly and to, uh, to get the correlations. All right, to do that, it's pretty straightforward. We just call the core function on the stocks returns. All right, and we end up with a little table that we can analyze. All right, and we can see that, you know, Facebook is pretty strongly correlated with both Amazon and Google. Uh, it's, it's more weakly correlated with Netflix and Actually, as you look down the Netflix column, you can see that, well, it's, it's pretty weakly correlated uh, with everything there. All right. If you want to get a look at that graphically, we just call the plot function on the stocks returns data. All right. And it gives us a scatter matrix of uh, each stock pair. And just to give you an idea how to read this, uh, this is... Uh, you know, Facebook on the Y and Amazon on the X. Okay, so as we look across, it's it's Facebook on the on the Y and each of the other stocks on the X. All right, and uh, down here uh, it, it's flipped around, so we have Amazon on the Y and Facebook on the X. Okay, so uh, I hope that helps with stock correlations in R.